Do you have a check engine light that pops up five to 10 minutes after starting your drive? Do you have a P128 air code? You might need to replace the thermostat on your Jeep. In this video, I'll show you how to properly diagnose and replace your Jeep's thermostat. This is a medium difficulty job that will take about 30 to 60 minutes. I started noticing problems on cold mornings that my Jeep was not warming up as quick as usual, and then I got a check engine light. I threw on my Jeep code scanner and it came back as a P128 air code, which has to do with the engine not warming up properly. The likely culprit was the thermostat. The car is at 115,000 miles, so I wasn't surprised. If you don't have one of these check engine light code scanners, it's well worth the money and they're very affordable. They work on the OB2 outlet, which is universal on all cars sold in the USA, so they'll fit no problem. I'll put a link in the video description below for the top rated ones. Okay, so now that we know that the thermostat needs to be replaced, we need to source one. I generally like to stick with genuine OEM parts for my vehicles, but I couldn't find one that's available on Amazon or could be shipped very quickly. I found it on a Mopar website, but it would take a little over a week and it cost two to three times as much. The reviews for the one on Amazon were very good, even though it's aftermarket. And I'll put a link in the video description below of the exact make and model of the one I purchased. If I have any issues with it, I'll also comment below to let you guys know. This part was on Amazon shipped to my house in two days and it was only $23. You'll also need a bottle of 50-50 pre-mixed coolant for Mopar and Jeep and that I would also try to buy genuine brand. This is available on Amazon and is reasonably priced. You can try to save the fluid, the old fluid, when you do this repair, but it's hard to capture all of it and it's easier just to buy new fluid and have that ready in case you have any issues with it draining out. The job would be slightly easier if you buy a special radiator filling funnel, but I did my job without it and you'll see here. I'll put a link below for the special funnel that other people are using. You'll need some basic tools such as a small trim kit pry bar, a socket set, a T27 torque bit, and other people said a 10 millimeter socket worked for their cars. You'll also need a large flathead screwdriver. For supplies, you'll want a large black trash bag and a small plastic container to capture the old coolant. It would also be good to have some anti-seize lube and also dielectric grease. If your car's older like mine has not been worked on in quite a few years, it's possible that you'll break or crack the evaporator tube when you move it. I broke mine when I did the spark plug replacement video, and you should check that one out if you haven't replaced your spark plugs. It's an easy item to replace the evaporator tube, and it's available on Amazon for $39. They just get old and dry, and the rubber cracks. Okay, now that we have our parts and supplies figured out, let's get this job done. I'm gonna put a list of all the steps that I did in the video description, so if it helps you, you can print that out. First, make sure that your engine coolant fluid is not too hot. You don't want to be dealing with boiling hot fluids, so let your engine cool down if it's been run recently. You can tell how hot the fluid is by feeling the large black radiator hose and also the cap of the radiator. Next, we'll take the decorative engine cover off by yanking straight up. You can apply some grease to these circular holes here if it's tough to get off and that'll be easier next time. Next, we need to remove the entire air intake. You can either separate the air filter from the air intake or take it all off together like I do here. There will be two metal clips for the air filter box. You'll wanna pop those off and then the air box will be ready to start coming up. Next, you'll want to carefully Disconnect the evaporator tube by prying up with the plastic clip here. This is the tube I talked about earlier that can crack if it's old and dried out. Then we will slide the other part of it off the air intake to the right. Next, we need to remove the sensor, so you'll pull up on the red T part of this tab and then press down and it will slide off easily. If it's not coming off easy, you're not doing it right and you'll need to stop here and figure it out before you break it. Next, loosen the hose clamp so that the entire air intake will be ready to slide off the engine. The air intake is held down in the center by one large plastic and metal clip. You'll need to get directly under it and pull straight up. Now we can apply our black trash bag underneath the thermostat. Using tape, we will funnel the plastic bag down into a plastic container which will capture all the fluid when we spill it out. You can also put some cardboard underneath your car as a backup. 
Now that we're ready to catch the fluid, we can open up the radiator cap. You'll want to press down firmly and turn it to the left. We can use some pliers to compress the hose clamp and walk it back out of the way from the thermostat. Mine was really cold, the tube, so it was really hard to get it to spin off the thermostat. So instead, I decided to remove the thermostat first and then slide that off of the rubber tube. I used my T27 Torx bit to loosen the two bolts on the thermostat. There the old goes. rubber gasket on the thermostat stayed attached to the engine, so make sure that you pull that off and make sure that your new part has a rubber gasket. On the new part, I used some electric grease to lube the new gasket. I put the new thermostat back onto the radiator hose and then pushed the thermostat in place and attached it using the T27 Torx bolts. The thermostat should go on firm and allow the rubber seal to seat completely, but do not over tighten these bolts. They should be no more than nine foot pounds. Use your pliers again to compress the hose clamp and walk it back into the exact same position it was before. Now remove this black bleeder screw on top of the thermostat and I'll put some dielectric grease on it here. Next, we'll fill the radiator back up with Mopar brand 5050 coolant mixture using my yellow funnel. This is where you can use a fancier funnel and fill it up completely and allow it to drain down with gravity. When the coolant reaches the thermostat, it'll start running out of the bleeder screw and you want to allow that to happen for a little bit until no air bubbles are appearing and then you'll tighten down your bleeder screw. As you fill the radiator back up, air pockets and bubbles will come out of the filler neck and that's a good thing. We want to get all the air out of the system. You can massage the big black coolant tube to push fluid into the thermostat and allow bubbles to rise back up. You can also let it sit for 20 minutes and allow those bubbles to work themselves out of the system. If any of the coolant spilled onto your engine or the belts at this point, it's important to get that off and removed. Careful here, you do not want to get water in your air filter on the right side or in the coolant filler to the left. You can either use a fresh water hose like I did to spray down the front of your engine or washer fluid works as well. Make sure you get off all the coolant from the front of the engine and any of the belts. Then I used compressed air to spray off any of that water. You could also let it just air dry here. Now it's time to reinstall the air box the same way it came off. With everything back, take a step backwards and double check your work and make sure there's nothing loose and everything's ready to go. Pay special attention to tightening that air intake hose clamp. Next, we're gonna start the engine and then monitor the coolant level. We want it to stay filled at the current level. We can expect it to drop as the engine warms and the thermostat opens. So go ahead and start your car and be ready to add coolant as soon as that thermostat opens. In my case, it was a cool day and it took longer than I expected, almost 15 to 20 minutes with the engine idling until that thermostat opened. But as soon as it did, the fluid dropped quickly, so I had to work fast to refill the fluid to the top. Once it starts warming up, it's going to overflow on you, so you'll want to put the cap back on to stop that. Once your system is closed back up, you can turn your heater on to max and I'll let that run for five minutes, and that'll push the coolant towards the heater core. At the very end, check the clear plastic coolant reservoir and make sure that the fluid is above the minimum, yet below the max value. Now wipe up any spilled coolant near the filler neck. Okay, that's it. If you have any tips or tricks that'll make it easier for the next person, please comment below. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like and subscribe button so you'll be notified of more service videos like this. I hope this video helped you out and saved you a little money. I'll see you in the next video.